Welcome everyone to Knox Game Design for May 2024. So this month I'm going to be talking about flood fill and how to implement that using recursion. So first of all, uh, basics of recursion. Recursion is a way for you to write a program and you can calculate the output uh, of a problem by having a method call itself multiple times and eventually you have a um, uh, an end condition. So once this method calls itself repeatedly, it will keep adding onto the stack. And then once it reach, reaches that conclusion state, the final state, then it'll start popping or unwinding that stack and, and uh, return the answer. So uh, also put here, see also induction. It's kind of like induction uh, in mathematics where you assume the start state and then you have the next step then you prove for the next if the next step is true then it's, it's true for all cases so similar to that so here's an example simple example of um, recursion with c this is the first example i learned when when i started college is how to multiply using recursion so you can actually determine the product of two values uh, without using a multiplication operator uh, and without using a loop. So uh, I have it here on the, the slide right here, but also have it in my uh, in my msys window. So it's recursion.c. Uh, so basically we it's just a standard C program. We have our int main void, and I got three cases right here, and each of these is going to call this method called recursion multiply, and recursion multiply returns an int and takes two variables, two parameters. It takes an int value and then an int time. So if you want to know, uh, like, for example, the product of three and four, you just call recursion multiply with three and four. So what that's going to do, it's going to come in past the three as the first parameter and four is the second value. So for every time this gets called, it's going to reduce that I times value by one. And then when I times gets uh, to zero, then, then it stops. And then it starts popping off the stack or un unwinding the stack. But while it is greater than zero, we're going to take the value that the first value that's passed in in this case a three and then we're going to assign that uh, that value then we're going to add on the result of calling that recursion multiply calling the same function again passing in that value and then the new value for i times which is one less than the previous value for i times. So the first time it's going to get called, it's going to be, get called with parameters three and four. Then it's going to come in here. Then it's going to add on recursion multiply three and three. So then the next time it gets called, we're going to reduce that i times value by one. So then it's going to be called with three, two, then three, one. And then when it gets that i times gets to zero, then it's going to stop. And then it's just going to Start, start popping those values off. So every time that gets called, it's going to add on that 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 value. Um, so yeah, I mean, it really isn't saving you any processing or anything, but it's a good example on how to uh, how to do recursion. So you can compile this with GCC and recursion .c, Then output recursion. Then that will make an exe. So do recursion exe. Then you can see I had other examples here. Two times twenty-one. You can also use like three values right here as well. So if we look at that recursion dot c. So for that one, I just do a recursion multiply. Then pass in recursion multiply with the two parameters. Then come then the third parameter. So it's kind of like uh, doing functional programming kind of a introduction to how to do functional programming. So that's just an intro to recursion. I think you know, all software developers should know how to do simple recursion, how to specify that in state. So the application I'm going to look at this month is the flood flow algorithm, which I think every game developer should know because uh, you can use it for various different 
purposes. It's just a good one to know. So, but to be able to do a flood field. So this is like the old MS Paint that I grew up with back in the nineties. Uh, you can like do like uh, shapes, draw shapes with your pencil or pen tool. Then you could use the paint bucket to fill that in. But uh, the paint bucket is, isn't just magic or anything. There's an algorithm on how that determines what which pixels get filled in. So first of all, to do our simple drawing program, we need to define constants or cell size, screen width, and screen height. Uh, that can also be like window width or window height. Then you need a 2D of rays of the cells. So our cells are going to be, in this example, 16 by 16. So we're going to do screen width divided by cell size, screen height divided by cell size. So that's going to be our 2D array of cells. Then on the draw call, we're going to loop through all those cells, and we're going to draw the cell at location. So for the X, it's going to be column times cell size, and then for Y, it's going to be row times cell size. For handle input on every update, we're going to uh, determine the row if the mouse is clicked. Uh, the row is mouse Y divided by cell size, and column is mouse X divided by cell size. We need to make sure that we're doing some balance checking so we're not clicking outside the window or anything, and make sure that it's less than the total row and column count times the cell size. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have like a, the ability to change color of our pencil or pen tool, whatever we want to call it. Um, go ahead and open it up here. Uh, so this is the code right here. So I'm just using the basic mono game template in Visual Studio. I called it Flood Field. Just using the, I didn't even rename the default class. It's just game one. So we've got our screen width. Setting it at 1280 by 720, 720p. Um, cell size is 16. We've got our 2D array of cells. I forget in, in C sharp the difference between the common notation for a 2D array and the, the two open and close square brackets. But it seems like always, seems like the, I think the comma notation means it can be a, dynamically sized array for each row, I think. Um, so I usually go with this. Um, so I'm going to keep track of the total row and total columns. That can be calculated, but I'm just going to go ahead and store it in a variable. Going to have a list of colors, uh, valid colors, and then we're going to have a selected color. I'm um, keeping track of the previous keyboard mouse states in our constructor. We're setting the screen, the window size to screen width and screen height. Um, then apply changes, because by default it gives you a little itty bitty tiny window, like 640 by 40 or something like that. Um, in our initialize, we're going to calculate total rows, total columns, and cells. This is our 2D array of cells. We're going to make a new int to rows, total columns. Uh, this was just testing right there. <laughs> I want to comment that out. Just to make sure I could draw a cell. Um, so we're going to make a new list of colors. Then to that, we're going to add all our colors. So I, I looked up the color codes for the the standard eight set of uh, cray little crayons. So it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue. I think purple. Brown and black. I think I'm forgetting one in there. Uh, yeah, because that's yeah, black, brown, purple. This looks like it's blue. And yeah, I'm not sure. This is the standard. So by default, we're going to have uh, four uh, selected color four. So I got it set. If you look in. So on our update, we've got handle input right here. And that's going to get called every update. So here's where we're like, give the user the ability to change color. So I'm, this could be cleaned up right here, but I just have a different case for each number key. So you can use zero through eight for changing the color. Uh, if keyboard state is key down zero and not the previous keyboard state is zero. So it means it's been pressed uh, on that front or on that update. Uh, then we're gonna set the selected color to zero, which is white. Yeah, th that's white right there. So zero is white. 
Red is one, two is orange, three is yellow, four is green, five is blue, uh, six is purple, seven is brown, and I think eight is black. And then if you press the C key, then it's going to clear all the cells. Um, here's the fill cell. Whenever you, uh, if the left mouse button is clicked, then we're going to fill that cell at Y divided by cell size, X divided by cell size. The fill cell, all that's going to do is it's going to check the bounds. And if it's in the bounds, then we're going to set that the cell at that location to the selected color. And it's not a color object, it's just an integer and an index to that color, one, one, 0 through 8. Clear cells, we're just going to leap through all the cells in the 2D array and set them all to 0. So by default, everything's 0, which is white. Um, in our draw, so this is kind of like where I actually started out was with the draw. Um, so you, we're going to do a sprite batch begin and then a sprite batch end at the, down there. Then we're just going to loop through all the cells, through all the rows and through all the columns. And we're going to call sprite batch draw using the texture, which I call image cell. Image cell is set in the load content. Image cell equals content load texture TD cell. That's set to an instance variable at the top, texture 2D image cell. And that's actually set in the uh, content, content MGCB right there. If you double click that, this is kind of like standard mono game stuff. You can see the cell picture right there. So it's just a, a blank 16 by 16 white uh, PNG. And you can actually add that using the uh, add existing item, then you can, yeah, there it is right there, cell.png. That's how I added that. So the, the nice thing about using a white sprite is you can use, uh, you can use that index to set the color by the index. So we're going to draw a new rectangle at column times cell size, row times cell size, with the size, cell size, cell size, using the color index at that cell row column. So whatever index that is, integer that is, is going to draw that color. Or it's going to set that texture to that color. Um, here's the, I, was, I was going to make it where uh, it's going to use HSV values. So if you need to get, uh, this is kind of like a little bonus here. <laughs> if you need to get an RGB value, red, green, blue value from a hue saturation, value here's a function that you can use I, and i end up not going with this i just use the list of colors but i did a little bit of research i think i did this before but i think by default mono game doesn't include an hsv to rgb function so you, here's the code you calculate the c x and m values and based on whether the hue is between, it's like in increments of 60, between 0 and 60, 60 and 120, 120 and 180, 180 and 240, 240 by 300. Uh, that determines within those ranges which values get assigned, the CX or 0 get assigned to RGB. And then at the end, your result color is going to be R plus that M value, G plus that M value, and B plus that M value, times 255 to give you a value between 0 and 255. One thing where I messed up, be sure to cast these as an int that because the three parameters by ints will take the 0 to 255 values. If any of these are floats, then it's going to expect that it's going to use the, uh, the, the method implementation that uses the 0, .0 to 0 to 0 1.0 float notation. 0 to 1 notation instead of 0 to 255. So that that threw me for a loop for a little while. But anyway, I didn't use any of this. I just used the array. So anyway, if I press flood fill right there. In a second, it's going to start up. Okay, so it's going to start up with a blank white window. I think by default our color is four. So that's going to give us a green value. If I press one for red. Uh, if you go too fast, then it'll leave gaps. I didn't like to do a line implementation or anything. Um, but yeah, I'm pressing the numeric keys to give me different colors. But yeah, this is great. But the only problem is 
is it's not filling in any of these. Um, yeah, so those are the like the eight crayon colors that I did. <laughs> so it's like a very fundamental drawing program, and I, I suggest anybody that's getting started with programming it's like this is a good test right here aside from the number guessing game is like yeah just make see if you can do a simple drawing program that's that's a good way to start out and that's kind of like a first step and then then if you can say if you can implement a drawing program then you say hey that's on my list my what they call it, the the tool set bucket of tools or whatever it's in your tool set and it's like yeah i can write a program uh, a drawing program. Then if you press C, that's going to just set all those indexes indices to zero and it immediately clears everything. Okay, so that's our simple drawing program and there's like an example that I did right there in Knox Game Design <laughs> using that program. So here's the the flood fill. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. So whenever we click the right mouse button, the previous state was pressed and the previous state was released and it's pressed and and we only want to call this once when the button gets pressed down we don't want to keep calling this because that that's that's not good that'll cause problems um so we're going to get the selected row selected column where the mouse was clicked and then if it's this is the bounce checks right here if selected rows greater than zero selected rows less than total rows selected columns greater than or equal to zero and selected calls less than total columns then we're going to get the current color i'm calling it i replace color we're going to get the current color at that cell where it was clicked so we get that by looking at the td array cells i cells i selected row i selected column then we're going to select assign that to i replace color and if that replace color does not equal the current color then we're going to call flood fill using the selected row, selected column, and the replace color. So then that's going to call flood fill with those three parameters down here, that function. Um, so here again, we're doing bounce checking. If the row is greater than zero, greater than equal zero, the row is less than total rows. If i columns greater than zero, greater than or equal zero, and i columns less than total columns. And then if the cell at that location equals the replace color, then we're going to set that cell to the selected color. And then we're going to call flood fill on the four adjacent cells. We're going to call flood fill on the column to the right. We're going to call flood fill on the column to the left. We're going to call flood fill on the column or the row uh, below. So plus one is actually the row below. Uh, if you're going from top to bottom in Y direction, and then flood fill row minus one, the row above, um, we're going to set to the place color. So, so once each of these four get call, gets called, um, it's going to call it again with that offset. Then, if the offset is out of bounds, or if that new location um, is not the replace color, then it's going to quit calling this if function. That's when, when it's going to stop and it's going to start popping off the stack. Um, so it, this actually works pretty well. And I've seen, looked at, at some other implementations of recursion for flood fill. There's an example right there. And it talks about using tuples and all this. And, and so there's, couple of different ways you can implement this but if you're just doing a simple replace color that's all you need to do is like those four lines the one to the right one to the left and one above and one below then then check your bounds and then check and make sure that the color is the color that you're replacing so if you look up here this is where i've implemented it here's the flood fill where we're clicking the right mouse button and then we're getting selected row this is the same thing that's on that previous slide and then we're going to get the replace color at that clicked location. And if it doesn't equal the replace color, then we're going to call flood fill with the selected row and selected column and then pass in the replace color. So and here's our flood fill method right here. This is all it is right here. So um, we're going to do the bounce checking right there. Then we're going to check and make sure that this new location is 
the index of the replace color. If it is, then we're going to set that one to the selected color, and then we're going to call flood fill on the four adjacent cells above, below, to left and right. Now, sometimes it's like, well, if you're not actually replacing the color as you go, then you need to keep track of of which cells you visited, and that's when you may want to like keep track of the tuples and all that, and create a queue and all that. So, so if you're not replacing the color as you go, then then, then there's a case for doing that. But if we're, we are replacing the color as we go, then that's all you need to do right there. So let's see if I can do like a all right mocks. So here's a red K. And again, make sure that you're not leaving any gaps, just like the old school paint. Okay. Then I'll make in. I'm not going to have enough space. I'm not sure. And there's a, a gap right there. K in. O. O. So I'm doing this with the left mouse button. And there's our X. So the X kind of looks like the K. Nox. For Nox game design. So now we're going to do the right click. So do five. There's a blue and purple. Brown and let's go back to red for that one. Yeah, so that's the flood fill algorithm right there. <laughs> um, you can go and press zero, I think. Change them back. We want to do eight. Then we can. So you can also do these, but they're only going to fill in from while the selected cells are contiguous there. That'd be like an exercise to the student is like a, a global color replace, which is usually a good tool to have in a paint program. But yeah, this really isn't making a game, but on the next slide, I did have uh, examples where this could be used uh, in gaming. Like if you're doing a level editor or a map editor, things like that. I always think of like the old Warcraft and RTS games and making my own stages. And there's red, there's orange, green, and blue. Oops. <laughs> I did the background purple. Let's do a uh, red background. And then like a green letters. You can do something wild like that. Yep. <laughs> kind of like a Christmas theme there. Mox Christmas theme. So yeah, let's go back here. Uh, There's an example. Yeah, so one of the games I implemented a long time ago is a simple Minesweeper game I did for Android, or I did it in Unity and export it to Android. But yeah, it's, I think of that one, I kept track of all the visited cells when I was opening up the adjacent cells. So yeah, if you do your paint program, the next step is to do a Minesweeper clone, which is a pretty simple game to implement. And then here, made a note here, if you're not coloring the cells as you go, then you got to maybe do an extra check to see if it's a visited cell. But since we're coloring as we went, then we knew the color, if we changed it to the selected color, the selected color isn't the replace color, so we knew it was visited, so that's what made that Im implementation simple with the four calls. Uh, also, you need to watch out for in infinite recursion. I, ran <laughs> I even ran into this when I was implementing this, and uh, and good thing is, like Visual Studio is good at catching infinite recursion, otherwise known as Stack Overflow. <laughs> You'll get a Stack Overflow error. Uh, once it recurses too many times and it kind of detects on that and says, hey, uh, you got an infinite, kind of like an infinite loop going on there. And like I mentioned, if you're doing a level or a map editor for a game, then, then it's good to know, especially if it's a, a 2D cell, square cell based game, then uh, it's good to know how to 
do a flood fill because if you're like drawing an ocean or something, you don't want to have to fill in every single little pixel <laughs> as you're coloring there. You want to just like do a flood fill and fill all that in. Yeah, so that's it for the uh, recursion and flood fill. Hope uh, people found it interesting. Uh, it's a good introduction. Like one of the first things that I learned when I got into my computer science college program at Georgia Tech was how to do recursion. And I wasn't exposed to recursion before college, so it's a good thing to know how to do, especially if you're, like I said earlier, if you're getting into functional programming, it's used a lot if you're doing like Lisp or uh, Scheme or probably even other languages. It's good to know how to do recursion. Uh, so anyway, that's going to wrap it up for May 2024. Hopefully everybody found it interesting. Hopefully we all learned something and uh, I'll try to be back in a month.